please add this to your notes for commercial wall systems. Uh, I love this um, presentation. This is really cool. Um, that previous slide just shows you what we're going to talk about. But we'll just jump right into it. Um, commercial wall systems are very different than residential wall systems, which we did first semester. So first thing that you probably want to note here is the difference between load-bearing walls and non-load-bearing walls. Uh, you don't need to write all this down, but please don't screenshot this one. Um, when you can type it, please type it. It's important that you do that. It helps you remember it a little bit better. Load-bearing walls support um, loads other than their own weight. So load-bearing walls can support floors and roof above. And that's what happens in your house. You have load-bearing walls on the, the, all the exterior, almost all the exterior walls in your house, the ones that are non-gable ends, they are load-bearing walls. You take that wall down, the house falls down. A non-load-bearing wall supports only its weight. And I want you to look around the room right now. All of the walls in this room are non-load-bearing walls. They're not supporting any weight above it because we have giant concrete columns and concrete beams above, and they're supporting all of the loads of the floors above. So we do not have any load-bearing walls in our commercial system as a school, and that's typically the case. In a commercial building, a lot of times they're non-load-bearing walls uh, because you have giant columns and giant beams. So that's a really critical thing in that for commercial wall systems, many times you do have these non-load-bearing. Um, not always, though. So let's get into uh, some examples. Load-bearing walls. Uh, you can have a wood load-bearing wall, very common in residential. Low-rise commercial construction. Um, there's a building just being built on um, Highway 287 that is like an, an old people home type place, um, assisted care living. And they have, it's built out of all wood, so they're going to have load-bearing walls, and it's a commercial type building. Now, there's also precast concrete and light gauge steel. So these are three different options for load-bearing walls, wood, precast concrete, light gauge steel. Um, load-bearing walls, other common commercial wall materials are, and we're going to get into each one of these three, so don't write these down yet, um, and let's look at those. So first, what is concrete made out of? This one you might want a screenshot just so you have the, uh, the breakdown, but the point of this slide is that nothing has really changed all that much when in kind of the general mix for what concrete is. Um, it's 40% gravel, 25% sand, and only 11% cement in here. So you can see that you know about 65-70% of this is gravel and sand, and the rest is cement, which then mixes and has a chemical reaction with water and kind of bonds all these things together. And then there's air that's kind of mixed in uh, with the gravel and sand. So concrete, um, note these advantages down, that it is um, very, very strong. When you talk advantages over wood, uh, especially in compression, concrete is very strong in compression. It's durable, fire, pest resistant, rot resistant, low maintenance, and energy efficient. Its thermal mass stores heat energy. So this is kind of a cool thing. When you go into downtown Denver, there's concrete everywhere. Or a better example is go to a giant city like New York City. Um, concrete everywhere. So at night, it's actually still incredibly warm because the sun has been beating down on all that concrete and that concrete actually absorbs that heat energy and then releases it over the course of the night. So the mornings stay cooler longer because it's had time to cool down and the evenings are actually quite warm in large cities. All right, green concrete. You can earn credits, lead credits for green concrete if you um, use if you recover uh, materials from a 500 mile radius. That's where you're kind of getting materials from uh, using recycled aggregates. So these are just a few examples where um, you can have green concrete. It's just using locally available materials, recycled um, gravel and things like that. So um, another one is taking energy advantage of the thermal mass of the concrete. If you put heat um, tubes that are it's kind of tubing through the concrete and it pours hot water it's not really water but through that concrete then that concrete absorbs the heat and in the winter time um, it kind of releases heat so that's actually your heating system um, they're just called heated floors and a lot of people in Alaska had that because it was very very efficient um, heating the floor and let that floor just radiate heat throughout the house all right let's look at cast in place concrete um, this is a very common type system is cast in place concrete. You have um, walls are formed, reinforced, and poured in place. And the reinforced steel bars, so you have these forms. Uh, this, this little steel mesh here has um, probably behind this is just wood. And they just pour concrete and it just kind of settles in. It's like you're filling a bowl. And that's sort of a cast in place concrete. Um, so you can see here there's these styrofoam insulation 
panels. And what they do with these styrofoam insulation panels is they set one up here, they set one up here, and then there's steel bars that connect those two together. And so those styrofoam panels are actually, that's actually your mold. And then you pour all the concrete in there, and they have a giant um, concrete truck that, um, that actually has, you know, kind of this big elephant trunk that pours all the concrete in. It sucks it out of the concrete mixer and then pours it inside that mold. And within that mold, you have all these pieces of rebar, this reinforcement bar to kind of keep it strong. Then after that, you don't have to peel those molds away because it's just insulation. It's already there. Cast and place concrete walls with insulating concrete form. That's what I was describing. You have your insulation and then you pour the concrete in there. Those insulation forms actually just stay right there. And this is an example of that right there. You have these styrofoam panels here. And this thing that's coming down here, this blue thing here, that's the, it's a pumper truck, concrete pumper truck that's just pumping the concrete in as it sucks it out of these giant, uh, or out of these mixers. So here's some cast and place concrete examples. Um, this Dubai Tower was a cast and place example. That is an enormous engineering achievement, tallest building in the world at the moment. Um, and so here's a few other ones. You can see all of the framework that's involved um, to be able to cast it in place because you have to build the forms and then you pour the concrete outside of that. So there's a lot of work involved in making the forms and you've got to tear them all down when you're casting in place.